compared the images of storming the president's residence in Colombo to what happened on January 6th in Washington, D.C. Is this the, the same thing, or is this an Arab Spring? How are you reading what's taking place in Sri Lanka right now? Well, Natasha, it's a, it's a, it's a historical moment uh, for the Sri Lankan people. And never in the Sri Lankan political history we have witnessed something like this. So it is an Arab Spring moment. I call it because of the, it matches the three characteristics of the Arab Spring. The people were against the autocratic rule. They were against uh, rampant corruption. They were against the economic condition, the irrational decisions that the Rajapaksa regime took, the heavy militarization, and, you know, the family rule. Um, and many other, uh, I mean, the people were going through their daily, uh, their daily lives were under serious pressure, uh, days uh, standing in the queue, uh, queue lines. So multiple, um, I would say, conditions uh, triggered this. Asanga, a lot of people will look at the images we're showing of people storming into that palace and taking control as a point of inspiration, that it's the people taking back ownership of their country. But others will see that and be frightened and say, that's a mob. And that is complete loss of control of any sense of order in, in the country as well. Is this a major national security issue? That's incorrect, uh, Natasha. It's not a mob. There is children. There is... Uh mothers, there is, uh, I mean, there is middle class, there is everybody. I mean, ev from every district, uh, people came to Colombo. Uh, and what they wanted was to overthrow this regime. The regime is corrupt. They have multiple uh, abuse. They abuse the people, uh, suppressing, uh, you know, human rights, as well as many other concerns. I mean, uh, the people were hungry. They, and they had, some of them had one meal a day. So, uh, I mean, look at the decisions they took. Uh, a few days ago, they appointed a casino boss to the, to the cabinet. Those are irrational decisions uh, taken by the prime minister. So they want the president to step down as well as the prime minister. So who's running the government right now? Well, right now, um, well, the president uh, has said that he would uh, resign. Uh, on the 13th of July. So the, uh, according to the Constitution, the Speaker would uh, become the acting president. And uh, the next Prime Minister will be called from the, uh, the Parliament. And uh, the, whoever the, has the largest number of seats as well as the most confident person will be. And it is going to be an interim regime. Uh, the Sri Lanka requires immediate elections. So it requires elections and uh, to appoint the new leaders. Do you feel, whoever the new leadership is, that it will resolve some of the big issues, specifically the economic ones? But as you said, basic needs are not being met. People don't have food to eat. They don't have access to their medicines. Correct. We, uh, we have not even reached a staff-level agreement of the IMF. The Rajapaksa regime uh, kept on basically rejecting the IMF proposal from initial stage. Then they started accepting it uh, after the new prime minister came in. But is at least we have to reach staff level agreement and the, the large amount of debt which we have borrowed the, uh, the sustainability debt sustainability program has to be sort of known up. The insolvency issue, the liquidity issue has to be has to be resolved. So that you you need the political stability here. Here is a situation where you do not have the political stability. So immediate political stability is required to bring in the economic sustainability as well as the foreign aid. I think that's my big question is what is going to ensure any political stability? Because it looks incredibly unstable right now. Correct. Because what what happened was the, the president was you know he, he was he was making a, a, a decision where placing the military between himself and the people. So asking the military to choose him to sustain another day. But the people, I mean, have identified him as a corrupt leader. And uh, what he has been doing for the last several years, then he became apologetic and he, he spoke to the people and said, look, I have done some policy blunders, but that, that didn't, that didn't uh, solve the, the result. Basically, so people uh, have taken uh, the upper hand now. So they, that's why they have said they will not leave the presidential house, the presidential office, until he resigns. Okay. How, uh, how do you anticipate this chapter of this ongoing story is going to end? It will end with the uh, resignation as well as the appointment of the new um, the uh, prime minister.
and the interim government. And uh, they would have to call for elections in a few months. But then uh, the IMF program has to be uh, looked at really carefully. And uh, we need the assistance from, I mean, India, many other countries, uh, US and other countries. So you need the political uh, stability immediately. So the new interim government have to uh, do that. So multi-party government, I would say, uh, would have to come forward. Okay, we'll continue to watch this incredible scene unfolding. Asanga, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Asanga Abaya Guna Sekara is a political analyst and senior fellow at the Millennium Project in Washington, D.C.